wild night in the Etihad as Manchester City finally get over their bogey team in Tottenham Hotspur. And this was a wild night at the Etihad, a roller coaster of emotions. For those of you who follow me on Twitter, you would have seen my tweet. I was not a happy guy at halftime. I won't go into that, but listen, it is what it is. Let's talk about the game because a lot happened and we learned a lot about Manchester City. In that first half, going into it, I was saying, what can we expect here? It was a starting 11 we had never seen before. We're seeing Stones and Lewis. We're seeing Alvarez play with Haaland. We're seeing um, no De Bruyne, no Foden, no Bernardo. It was going to be an interesting selection. It was going to be an interesting viewership. And I was saying, you know what? Throughout the first half, we were looking better than usual. We were looking better than usual. We were creating more chances. We still hadn't hit that gear that I want to see. We still hadn't hit that energy that I wanted to see. But it was looking better. It was an improvement on what we'd seen in recent weeks. We were creating chances. But unfortunately, Haaland has a head shape like a 50p coin. So it bounces up into Rose Zeb whenever it hits his forehead. But listen, it was progress. And I was saying, you know, with about five minutes to halftime, right, let's just get to halftime let Pep speak to them and then hopefully come out in the second half and put some of these chances to bed and then disaster strikes doesn't it disaster strikes goalkeeping error defensive error and we're 2-0 down at half time I mean let's talk about that first goal what on earth is Ederson doing what on earth is he doing? A goalkeeper with uh, the technical ability of Ederson and the expectation we have on Ederson he can see the whole pitch in front of him if he's unsure of the pass he's making, the five-yard pass he's making, just lob it. Just get rid of it. You're five minutes to half time. Just clear your lines and reset. Instead, he passes it to Rodri's right when Rodri really needs it on his left. And even at that, Rodri's under severe pressure. He has a Spurs player on his back and it all goes, you know, it all goes to, to crap, really. You know, the rest is history. Kulosevsky scores. And then the second goal comes. I, w- I don't even know how to describe the build-up play for the second goal, but all I can say is Emerson scored the goal. Um, Chicken Royale scored against us. You know there's a serious issue when Chicken Royale, Burger King special, is scoring against you to put us 2-0 down in halftime. And I'm saying deja vu has struck again. Tottenham have struck again and this time probably more detrimental than ever before. They've probably put one of, if not the final nail, in our Premier League race coffin. And I'm going, no, this, this, this really can't be happening. Like It can't be this bad. And then the boos, man. The boos ring around the Eddie had at halftime. I can't remember the last time, if ever there was a last time for me, that I've heard boos ring around the Eddie had, and it was sad. It wouldn't be me now personally. Whenever I'm at the games, it would never cross my mind when I'm when I'm unhappy at 2-0 down to, to boo, but um it is what it is, man. Maybe it's the bollocking they needed, and Pep must have given them a bollocking. We'll talk about Pep's comments after the game in his post-match interview. They were they were wild. But listen, the, the team needed to kick up the arse. They needed to find that gear, that energy I'm talking about. And they came out and delivered that in the second half. Listen, it doesn't matter how bad you're playing. I, I'm, I'm okay with players making mistakes. I'm okay with things not clicking and it doesn't look as fluid as maybe you might like. But above everything, above all of that, the one thing I want my team to have is, is character and fight till the end attitude. Never give up, fight till the end, never say die. We keep going, we don't stop, regardless of the situation we're in. And we've seen that in years gone by, coming down from, from you know, 2-0 to Aston Villa in the last game of, of the season last year to go on and winning 3-2. That was fight till the end. That was character. That was character. And we showed that last night in the second half. So many players stood up. So many players, it's like they, it's like something clicked at halftime. They were, it's like something snapped in their heads. Like, Hang on a second. We're the champions, four out of the last five. And we're being bullied by Tottenham. And we've been bullied by a few teams in recent weeks too. What is going on? This isn't us. This isn't us. And players stood up. You can see who wants it. I've questioned players in recent weeks saying, who wants it? Some of them don't want it. Bernardo looks like he doesn't want it. Foden looks like he doesn't want it. De Bruyne lackluster at times. None of these men played. And that was the right call from Pep. Whatever whatever you think about Pep's decisions and selection in recent weeks, last night he actually got it right. Because he put out players who looked hungry. They looked like they were determined and they wanted to win that game of football. And they don't want to let this Premier League race slide just yet. Rico Lewis, an absolute revelation at right back. I've been saying, pull him out of the spotlight, take the pressure off him. He's a young and up and coming right back. No, he has to be the right back. Walker has to hold bench. I think Cancelo has to hold bench. Rico Lewis is the full package, people. He's the full package. Technically, defensively, going forward, link up play, play him as a traditional right back, invert him into centre mid. Doesn't matter. He's the full goddamn package. 
Rico Lewis is a future star. I'm telling you, give that boy a new contract. Excellent last night. Absolutely excellent. So massive, massive tackles. Moving into the center half position, I said it in my preview that putting John Stones back in the team, you'll immediately see a 10, 15% increase in speed of transitional play. And that's what we saw from John Stones. He's much more technically gifted than even Ake and God bless Akanji too. Uh, I, I I appreciate Akanji. I know he's good for some things, but you can't ask Akanji to play that ball passing center half role that John Stones does. John Stones quicker on the ball. He's not afraid to drive forward, break between the lines. He played diagonal passes. He has these things in his locker. And that was a massive, massive reason as to why we were able to move the ball quicker and transition from the first phase to the third phase so much quicker because John Stones can do that. Rodri, excellent. Alvarez, man. Alvarez. People telling me about, you know, it was a big mistake letting Gabriel Jesus go. You're, you're getting rid of all that energy and high pressing um, intensity. Alvarez possesses those attributes. Alvarez has those qualities and he can finish. Alvarez is a better finisher than Jesus. I love Gabriel Jesus. I do miss him. There's a part of me misses him. But Alvarez can do everything he can, and eventually he'll be able to do more. And that's what we brought him in for, long-term vision. Pep's thinking long-term. Haaland gets his goal. He needed that after missing a chance or two in the first half. He needed it. And you can see the determination in Haaland. Haaland looks like he wants it, man. He doesn't want to let this Premier League slide just yet. He wants to hang on in there. Hold on and keep fighting until the end. Take it as far as we can. Keep the pressure on Arsenal. We're not going anywhere just yet. Grealish, excellent. Did you see that challenge Grealish made on Sun? There was one player between um, Sun and goal, and that was Rico Lewis, who was a bit further into the centre of the pitch. I think Sun would have had the legs to beat him. Grealish, man. Grealish, of all people, showing that determination to get back and make that challenge. That is fighting character. That is fighting character, and that's what I want to see. Riyad Mahrez, man. Riyad Mahrez, every season without fail, the first half of the season, you can criticize him. Doesn't look like he wants to be there. Disinterested. Maybe he's given up. Maybe he's lost his hunger. And then second half of the season, every year, PSG, Dortmund, big Premier League goals, you name it, Champions League mainly, it seems to be his thing, but he comes up with the goods, man. He comes up with the goods. He was a killer last night. He was a killer. Foden's going to have to hold bench for now, man. Unless you want to play in midfield, he's going to have to hold bench because I'm not taking Grealish or Mahrez off. And I'm not, I'm not taking Rico Lewis off either. Like I said, Walker and Cancelo have the whole bench. Last night was the second half performance that I needed. I needed to see that. I needed just, just for my own sanity and, and clarity that they're still fighting this team. They still want to achieve. I needed to see that. And now I've seen it. Now they've set the benchmark. They've set the basis for what we need to do going forward. Pep's going to war with his players, man. See his comments after the game. Pep's going to war with the players and even the fans to an extent. He said, I want my players back. I want my players back. These lot don't look like they want it. And uh, don't take it at face value, people. This isn't Pep saying the players are crap. Everybody has to go. Yada, yada, yada. No, this is him saying, listen, this is not good enough. Whatever about poor performances, whatever about not finishing chances, we can deal with that. That's something you can work on in the training ground. But not showing enough fight. That's not my team. That's not my team. And that's what Pep's saying. And he also talked about the whole organization from top to bottom. Pep wants players, man. Pep wants players. He wants to rebuild before a, a disaster strikes. As I always say, fix the problem before it happens. Fix the problem before it arises. That's what Pep's talking about. He wants players. That's a call on Sheik. That's a call on Khaldun. I want some fixing up here. I want some players. I need some cash. Give it to him, man. He's made few mistakes since he's arrived at the club. Give him what he wants. I trust him. Even when we weren't playing well in recent weeks, I was still saying, I trust Pep fully. I saw idiots on Twitter at halftime saying, Pep out. Are you mad? Remember who you're talking about and remember what he's delivered for us. Pep out. You out, man. Wow, I couldn't believe it. But listen, that second half, I needed it, man. I needed to see that. I need to see the fight and character and we need to take that into Wolves. I'm going to look at the fixture list here. I know we've got Wolves on Sunday. Must, must win game. I believe that's at home too, isn't it? Wolves, I've got it. Yeah, Wolves at home, 2 o'clock on Sunday. Must, must, must win. No point beating Tottenham 4-2 with that second half if you don't beat Wolves on Sunday. And then the next Premier League game is Tottenham away, then Villa at home, and then Arsenal away. Tottenham away obviously being the toughest one there, but we've just beaten them. We have never scored in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, but I don't see why we can't go there and beat them. This ha Last night's second half has to set the benchmark as to how we move going forward. It has to be. There has to be a switch of mindset. There has to be a drop in gear. There has to be a level up, whatever way you want to call it. 
If we want any chance of winning this Premier League, we need to play like that every game. That second half, every game. No slow start, no conceding goals at awful times. Back to being City. Back to being ruthless, aggressive, and hungry. Play like you've never won a Premier League. I'm telling you, man, massive, massive result last night. Massive, massive second half. Let me know your thoughts on everything down below in the comments. The player ratings are up on screen beside me, as always. Joe made them. So listen, don't come for me if you don't agree with them. Um, we'll do a preview then for Wolves closer to the time. Probably be a stream as well in between now and then too. So listen, get down below in the comments. Let me know all of your thoughts too. Leave a like on the video as well if you would. It massively helps. We're about 50 subs off 5K. So subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Good night and God bless. Come on, City. Listen to your heart, tell me who you wanna be. We can always start, start to believe. Listen to your heart, tell me that you understand.